Clearwater, you got some balls on you. I'm going to like the video. And we're going to watch one more because uh, the sound wasn't on. So we're going to watch this. Arrested on his own front porch. Massive lawsuit. Massive is in caps. So you know it's a serious lawsuit. Let's get into it. Most of the plate is right here. I wonder why. What and the right and wrong of police interactions. This episode covers obstruction, the right to film police officers, and warrantless arrests, and is brought to us by the Civil Rights Lawyers Channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On August 7th, 2020, deputies Dalton Martin and Jordan Horn of the McDowell County Sheriff's Office in West Virginia approached 66-year-old Donnie Hairston and his 63-year-old wife Ventress while they were sitting Ventress? on the front porch of the home they rented from former mil- His wife's name is Ventress? Dude, that's fucking crazy. Military police officer Jason Tart. The deputies asked the Harristons about Ventures four alleged marijuana plants that were found in some overgrown alleged. brush at a nearby property owned by a third party, and they both denied any involvement. When the deputies continued to question the Harristons, walk around the property, and look through windows, they called Mr. Tart, who walked over to the Harristons' residence from his nearby home. The interaction that followed was captured on Deputy Martin's body camera. Just because in the season that we're living in, I think it's important that I have your names. What do you mean, man? Um. Mm. Mm. He know what she talking about. He know exactly what she talking about. Y'all trigger happy. Y'all rest happy. Y'all put y'all knees on people necks happy. Mm, you know what she meant. You know exactly what she meant by that. A lot of crazy stuff going on. And so having your name makes me feel more secure. As I said, we came here June 28th. You know, we're actually new here. Mm. Okay. And for the police officers in this area to come up and say, are you growing marijuana? That is preposterous <laughs> to me. It's just a question. My yeah, well, I get that. Hey, she asked for your name. Your name, give it to her. And so the then name. my only question to you is your name. Just so... It's okay in my exactly. own heart and mind. And when I say the season we're living in, you know the season yeah. we're living yeah. in. Yeah, we know. We know, Mama, we know. This house? This house? No, that house. Uh, yes. Probably... Who lives there? Mr. Ferguson. He's probably there now. He's 79. Okay. All right, what's your name, sir? Jason Tart. Jason Tart. Tart. And what do you mean by the season we're Harrison. living in? Man. Why you push? Why you pushing the question, bro? Why you pushing the question? She asked for your name. You didn't want to give it a name, so you gonna push her about the season, bro? You know what? You 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 about to add to the season, homie? Uh, Sir, what's your? What do you need? <laughs> you got any exactly? Questions? Why are you here? What 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 is your reason for being here? No, I'll just I'll collect some information from you in a minute. Your name and date of birth. Uh -huh. so. for me. No, I'll just I'll collect some information from you in a minute. <laughs> you got any questions for me? No, I'll just I'll collect some information from you in a minute. Your name and date of birth, and such. What do you need my information for? You, you own these two homes, correct? Mm -hmm. what okay, do these, these two homes got to do with that. These two homes is near that marijuana grow, so I'd just like to have your name. You know how many people go through here. I understand. That's well, not going to do you one bit of good. Okay. Well, sir, I'm I'm going to need your name and date of birth, and I, I have that. Feel comfortable giving you my name and date of birth. Okay, well, this is a criminal investigation. You own these two homes, so by law, you do have to give me your name and date of birth, sir. If he gives you a reason, bullshit. yes, you do. Reason nah, no bullshit. bullshit. No. Nah. Because of the marijuana grow. No. It's not on my property. No, okay, exactly. Well, again, I have reason to believe. You hear butt buddy over there? Well, if if the police say you gotta do it, you gotta do it. We're the police. We're the good guys. The fuck. Believe that. These two homes here that you own, malarkey, is related to that marijuana grow. So you have to give me your name and date. So you're, he's assuming. These two homes here that you own is related to that marijuana grow. So no, you don't know that for a fact. You're assuming. You're assuming because these two homes are closest to that marijuana. It, it has to be these houses. That that is not. That ain't gonna fly in a court. Oh well, these two houses are the closest, so it had to be these. You find a dead body in an alley. Well, these two buildings are the closest to the to the body, so obviously 
the owners of these two buildings have something to do with it. That's not how this shit works. So you have to give me your name and date of birth by law. The deputies inform Mr. Tart that he is required Negative. by law Negative. to give his name and date of birth. West Virginia does not have a separate stop and identify statute that allows officers to arrest individuals for failing to identify themselves in certain situations. Rather, officers often use the state's obstruction statute to arrest individuals who refuse to identify themselves when they are required to do so. According to Section 61-5-17 so of the West Virginia Code, quote, a person who by threats, menaces, acts, or otherwise forcibly or illegally hinders or obstructs or attempts to hinder or obstruct a law enforcement officer Officer acting in his or her official capacity Which is guilty of a misdemeanor. Which in the 2003 aren't. case of State versus Sarinsky, the Supreme Court of Appeals of West Virginia held that, quote, refusal to identify oneself to a law enforcement officer does not, standing alone, form the basis for a charge of obstructing a law enforcement officer in performing official duties. Obviously. However, the court then clarified that, quote, the charge of obstructing an officer may be substantiated when a citizen does not supply identification when required to do so by express statutory direction or when the refusal occurs after a law enforcement officer has communicated the reason why the citizen's name is being sought in relation to the officer's official duties. Which they did not do. While the deputies did communicate a reason for requesting Mr. Tart's name by claiming that they needed it due to the proximity of the properties they, they, he owned they, to the alleged marijuana plants, the, the Fourth why. Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over West Virginia, determined in the 2021 case of Wingate versus Fulford that the application of a local stop and identify ordinance was unconstitutional, quote, when applied outside the context of a valid investigatory stop, and that, quote, a valid investigatory stop supported by Terry-level suspicion is a constitutional prerequisite to enforcing stop and identify statutes. Applying this reasoning, it is likely that a court would find that the deputies could not constitutionally arrest Mr. Tart for refusing to identify himself in this situation. Although 100% because they don't know. They're not even ha they don't even have a full investigation. All this guy is like, "Oh, somebody called about marijuana. This marijuana is close to your house, so I think uh you should give me your name and date of birth." What? Though the case law establishing this was not issued until after this incident occurred. It should also be noted that Mr. Tart did provide his name when the deputies first asked. He sure did. And because the case law, likewise, does not authorize an arrest for refusing to provide a date of birth, it is likely that a court would conclude that Mr. Tart's conduct did not rise to the level of obstruction. Go get a go get a pen and piece of paper. Reason to believe what? Why? Because these houses are here, do you understand that there's a lot of traffic going through here? Since we've lived here, people come up here and they park there and we don't know where the hell they go and then they come back out. I don't have a problem giving you my information. I'm okay, just well that's to all I need. It doesn't have to be an argument. I mean, just give me your name and birthday. You, it's easy. It's not easy. My property has nothing to do with what you found. Okay. Well, we're we're just making sure of that. Are you scared? We'll be the judge of that. Scared me? I mean, who scared you? Says that. Who, By asking you a question? Who, who comes? Well, to be fair, you didn't answer her question. All she did was ask for your name, and you still ain't gave it, Officer Dingleberry. Stuff and answer. So I don't want to hear that. And it scared you? I don't want to get that bass out your mouth, man. You scared because she asked for your name. You got scared. It was like, oh well, shoot. I guess I need to arrest these people. They know too much. They too smart. They ain't just listening to me. I'm trying to understand what it these scared you by me asking you a question. Smoking marijuana? And that's a question. <laughs> huh, huh, huh. She asked for your name. You still ain't give it, Dingleberry. Somebody scared you because they asked you a question is ridiculous. That's preposterous. I'm going to give me your name, sir. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. First name. It's ridiculous to you, sir. Yes, ma'am. But it's not ridiculous. Your first name. You. I'm not giving you my information, uh, sir. If you refuse to give me your information, I'm going to arrest you. That's why. <laughs> my property has nothing to do with any marijuana right, you know. whatsoever. Go ahead, you're going to arrest him. me if I don't give you my name and date of birth. It's obstructing an officer. How? Because you're hindering me from doing my job. You're hindering How me am from I hindering you from doing your sir. job if it's not on my property? Last chance to give me your name and date of birth, oh, sir. Oh, so you just going to come How am I hindering last, you? Sir, last chance to give me your name and date of birth. How am I hindering you? Place your hands behind your back. Place your hands behind your back. Are you going to give me a name and date of birth? Take me to jail. You're right. I'm hindering you from doing your job. Please. I'll see if I can find you my name first. No, I'm hindering well, you from doing your job. This is really going out off the Yeah, field. this is how you guys... This is bad. This is a, 112 control. This is, this is how you operate. This, this is a wrap. This is I'm fine. hindering you from well, doing your right. job. Y'all need to go inside. Again, you two go inside. Go inside. I'm afraid Go inside. Go inside. No, go inside as of right now. Tell me why. Go inside. What are you doing, Step off the porch. Step off the porch. 
I'll step off. Go the inside. What are you doing? Man, this is unnecessary for Sir, you to be doing. Go inside. This. He's standing on his own court. Go inside. No. No, you can't Don't put come. you cannot push people into their own home and close the door. You cannot do that. That is not legal. Go inside. Step back. Go inside. Look, Bye. Yeah, Bye. That, that's completely uncalled for. When Mr. Harrison starts filming the interaction between the deputies and Mr. Tart, Deputy Martin forces the Harristons into their home, pushing Mr. Harrison into his doorway and closing the door behind him, effectively preventing Easy him money. from continuing to record the Easy encounter. Money. While many federal circuits have acknowledged that the First Amendment protects the right to film the police on the performance of their duties, the fourth Circuit, which includes West Virginia, has not. In the 2009 what? case of Zemeski versus Hauk, the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals held that an individual's First Amendment right to record police activities on public property was not clearly established in the circuit. However, because the Zemeski decision. Oh my god, West Virginia, you guys are. F well. Land of the cousin lovers, so I guess. And did not Makes weigh sense. in on whether such a right existed. The state of the law regarding the right to film the police in the Fourth Circuit has remained unclear. In the 2021 case of Hulbert versus Pope, a U.S. District Court denied qualified immunity to an officer who arrested two individuals in February of 2018 for recording the police on the public sidewalk in front of the Maryland State House. Although parties typically cannot file an appeal until the case has been completely resolved in the lower court, the defendant filed what is known as an interlocutory appeal under section 1292 of title 28 of the u.s code which states that quote when a district judge in making in a civil action an order not otherwise appealable shall be of the opinion that such order involves a controlling question of law as to which there is substantial ground for difference of opinion and that an immediate appeal from the order may materially advance the ultimate termination of the litigation he shall so state in writing in such order the court of appeals which would have jurisdiction of an appeal of such action may thereupon in its discretion permit an appeal to be taken from such order. The defendant's interlocutory appeal to the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals argued that the arrest was proper and that video and audio recording of the police was not a so-called clearly established First Amendment right. As of the date of writing this episode, this case is Oh, West Virginia, you guys are so goddamn backwards. Is still pending, but when full of corruption. That's probably why it's still backwards. When the Fourth Circuit issues a decision, it will hopefully clarify whether the circuit recognizes the police can't do no wrong. I never had any issues with the police here. They're so friendly and kind to me. I don't see why people should just not listen to the police. They should just listen. Just listen. How hard is it to listen to the police? They don't do nothing wrong. They're the good guys. They fight the good fight is the right to film the police and the performance of their duties. Until this decision is released, it is difficult to predict how a court would rule on whether Deputy Martin violated Mr. Hairston's First Amendment rights by forcing him to stop filming, and if such a right was clearly established at the time of this encounter. Come on. Look, Walk. man, don't, don't, Walk. don't, don't, Walk. don't, listen, listen, Sir, you don't stop. have to, listen, You're man, listen, 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 this is, this, listen, 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 I can walk, I can walk okay, without we'll you walk. putting your damn hands on walk me, you to understand? The vehicle. I have not broken the law. Walk to the vehicle. All. Well, walk to the vehicle, don't sir. You're being recorded. Don't put your hands on me. I give sir. you no reason to touch me. I'm going to arrest you then. Place your hands behind your back. Uncalled for. Place your hands behind your back. Place your hands behind your back. Listen. Look, just relax, okay? Listen, you just you relax. Up. Place your hands okay. behind your back. You Please place your hands behind. You already won. They, they already broke several laws. Don't even resist. You done caught them several times just playing games. They don't want to answer. They don't want to reveal their name. You should have asked for the badge number if they if they would have said no to that. I mean, that's an easy dub right there. Behind your back. My hand is behind my back. It hands only takes you. one of you. Place your hands. Look, let him do it. All right, <laughs> let take him, your hands off. Let him do it. Okay. Let him do it. <laughs> you don't like him. I don't like either. I don't like either. Well, both of them. Both of them are freaking dummies, but. <laughs> Deputy Martin initiates an arrest against Mr. Tart on the porch by ordering him to place his hands behind his back. He then orders him to step down, and Deputy Horn handcuffs and arrests him in the driveway area immediately in front of the home. In general, the Supreme Court has long recognized that the land immediately surrounding and associated with the home, known as the curtilage, is considered part of the home itself for Fourth Amendment purposes. No. The court held in the 2021 case of Longa versus California that without other exigent circumstances, the 
pursuit of a fleeing misdemeanor suspect does not justify an officer's warrantless entry into a home or its curtilage. Further, in the 2018 case of Collins versus Virginia, the court concluded that, quote, when a law enforcement officer physically intrudes on the curtilage to gather evidence, a search within the meaning of the Fourth Amendment has occurred. Such conduct, thus, is presumptively unreasonable absent a warrant. Based on this precedent, it would seem that officers cannot arrest an individual in the curtilage of their home absent exigent circumstances justifying the intrusion. However, in the 1976 case of United States versus Watson, the Supreme Court held that the warrantless arrest of an individual in a public place upon probable cause did not violate the Fourth Amendment. And later that year, the court decided in the case of United States versus Santana that the front door of an individual's home was considered a so-called public place for the what? purposes of the Fourth Amendment. In reaching this conclusion, the court reasoned that, quote, while it may be true that under the law of property, the threshold of one's dwelling is private, as is the yard surrounding the house, it is clear that under the cases interpreting the Fourth Amendment, Santana was in a public place. What a person knowingly exposes to the public, even in his own house or office, is not a subject of Fourth Amendment protection. Bro, Relying they, heavily they on- They just moving backwards as hell. Oh my God, I can't even deal with this state no more. I'm so done. I want to know what happens because I can't even deal with this. They backwards ass laws. And the Collins case involved oh a search rather than a seizure. It is also possible that a court would distinguish this situation from those decisions and hold that the location of Mr. Tart's arrest did not violate the Fourth Amendment. Oh my God. West, I'm oh, never going to West. Ten four. He owns two properties right here on this Baptist Drive road. We locate a marijuana grow, probably not 100 foot, 50 foot from this last property of his. And he just won't give us his name, date of birth. Can't be arrested. He's a white male, black man. Black male. After placing Mr. Tart in the back of the police cruiser matter? and radioing in his arrest, Deputy Martin gathered the alleged marijuana plants and placed them in the trunk of the vehicle, presumably to take to the station as evidence. Mr. Tart was charged with obstruction of a law enforcement officer, but the case was dismissed by the prosecuting attorney on October 28, 2020, because Deputy Martin failed to appear in court. On August 9, wow. 2022... Who would have guessed? Two, Mr. Tart and the Harrisons filed a federal sue. lawsuit against the deputies, yeah, and right. as of the date of writing this episode, yeah, the right. case is still pending. Overall, so, Deputy Martin... So why is it called a massive lawsuit if he ain't get the payout yet? And Deputy Horn get an F. Why? Massive lawsuit, bro, didn't even get a payout. So they could eventually just say, oh, no, nah, we're just going to throw the whole case out for maintaining a hostile and aggressive demeanor throughout the encounter, arresting So now I'm upset and there's no payoff. There's no, absolutely no payoff. Mr. Tart for refusing oh to provide God. his name when he had already provided it and preventing oh Mr. Harrison from filming their arrest of Mr. Yeah, Tart by these guys forcing are him into his own backwards home. backwards as hell. They know they're in the wrong dude, didn't even show up to court because he knew he was going to lose that. When there were clearly no safety concerns. Although it is possible that the officers will be granted qualified immunity for at least some of their actions in this encounter, it is important to note that this does not mean they behaved professionally, or even that they did not violate Mr. Tart's or the Harrison's constitutional rights. It should not be forgotten that the deputies' behavior towards the Harrison's caused them to fear for their safety, and the deputies' failure to demonstrate any empathy or understanding as to to why the Hairstons might feel that way can only be characterized as a willful refusal to acknowledge the realities of the current state of police-citizen relations. Mr. Tart and the Hairstons get an A for remaining relatively calm and polite throughout the encounter, attempting to exercise their constitutional rights, and taking appropriate legal action I'm upset. I thought this was going to be a good video. Massive lawsuit with no payout, man. Nah, man. Don't trust the police. They're not the good guys. They're not on your side. Some of them are good, but they need to definitely fix all the corruption scandals and all the stuff that they go through. Anyways, that's the video, man. Link in the description if you want to see the whole video. Let me read some of these comments. I'll read these comments. Uh, the audacity to tell someone to go inside their own porch and then illegally step on their porch physically moving them inside. No training will fix this. It's a personality problem. Couldn't say it any better myself. That's a damn fact. 